and welcome back to the Adventures of Macanamphia. In today's video we're going to be preparing an area where we got to excavate and build a new water tank. So in a minute I'll spin you around and show you what we've got to do. Okay so as you can see running along the side of our land is, uh, is this water channel. This is the main channel uh, which brings the water to all the different pots of land around the area. And um, what we need to do at a, a later date is actually, I suppose, why, why this off across here. And what we can do then is we're going to build a, a water tank down into this area here. So for today, for today we're, going to, uh, we're going to trim this bank along here, trim it straight. We're going to excavate this bump here. I know you can't really tell on the cam camera, but it rises up on this edge here. Uh, not too close to this wall, obviously we don't under un undermine that. So we'll take it a metre away. We can probably meet away there and we're going to dig a line here and we're going to drag all the soil back. Now this tank's going to be about four metres wide in this direction, six metres long in this direction and basically as deep as I can get it. Okay so the end result is going to end up with, uh, with this all levelled along this area here. There'll be a bank of soil across here and then back along here. Okay, the reason for that being is what I want to do is leave a flat area. We've got the storms coming. We're in September, October, which is a stormy time of year. Uh, and hopefully this whole area will flood with water, seep down into the ground and make it a hell of a lot easier for digging with a mini digger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump straight into this video for the benefit of the people who are new, new to the channel. We don't want them getting bored and clicking away. And, and I'll catch the rest up of you up later, the, the return viewers with uh, what's been going on as we go along. There we go, success. Good old digger. So we'll just wait for it to warm up a little bit and we'll move up the top. Quite a way to go up there. Uh, looks like we've got a problem here that's gradually getting worse. That's going to be another job and another video at a later date. Replacing the, uh, the seals in this hydraulic ram. It's leaking down onto the floor there. It never ends. So that's more or less what it's going to be. I'm not going to get too anal about uh, getting it square or the exact length or the exact width. The purpose of this exercise is solely to trap the water inside this area uh, when the storms come so that it seeps down into the ground and softens it and makes it easier to dig. So I'm probably just going to tidy up that edge bank a bit. I'm going to flatten out all the bottom and bank it along because it's all at different levels. Flatten that all out so that hopefully the water will level, lie there level so that it all seeps down evenly. 
but like I say, I'm not going to go crazy with it. Okay, so I'm going to call it at that. I say it doesn't need to be perfect. We'll get in here again probably and uh, rake it out a bit to level it a bit more. But uh, like I said, the main thing is just to catch this water. Um, incidentally, this this is what we're fighting against. This sort of rock here, I'll show you on a bit of uh, B-roll in a bit how bad it is. That goes all the way along underneath all this land here. Uh, the Spanish, my Spanish neighbours took great pleasure in telling me uh, that I could never grow olive trees up here on this level because of this, because the ground's no good. Um, now they ask me how I managed to do it and uh, the, it wasn't easy. What I did is I, I actually dug out as much as I could with the digger. I then uh, got down with uh, a kango hammer and picked through the limestone through until I hit gravel again and then carried on digging. In the end the holes ended up a bit more than a, a cubic metre and I brought soil from a, a better part of the property where the soil's better further down into the gully and then filled all these holes with good soil and planted the trees in that. So it wasn't easy but it it certainly got the, uh, the Spanish, the local Spanish gossiping. In a minute I'll take you over and compare this tree to one of my neighbours who planted these about four or five years before me. Um, yeah, so this, my Spanish neighbours, they're going to gossip and speculate for about, a, I reckon, about a month before one of them finally can't take it anymore and comes up and asks me what I'm doing here. Always entertaining. Okay, I'll quickly take across the road and show you my neighbours. So, here we are on a bit of my neighbour's land. Uh, I helped him plant these trees. I don't know, it must, must have been about five, it could have been five, even maybe six years ago. So, they've been there and there a long time, but obviously they've got down to the rock and it's restricted uh, the root movements. Obviously, they're not growing any much bigger than this, really. Um, I'll quickly just nip you across the road. See, when you look at mine, mine are certainly no smaller, and, uh, and many of them are a lot bigger, and they're a lot younger. These trees, incidentally, up here, these almond trees, I've had this land nearly 20 years now, and these almond trees on here haven't really got any bigger since I've been here. They've sort of grown to the height, and then they've stopped at that, like I say, purely because the roots can't move. You basically you got sort of almond, almond bonsai trees. Okay then, so that's that part of that done. Now I'm going to take you and show you the next little job for this morning. Ah, look who's here. Sick notes turned up. Have you bought your rake? Why not? There's raking in there for you. Come and see what you think. Okay, so this is this is our next job. You may be recall from uh, previous videos repairing the storm damage. We we had to uh, repair this chunk of bank here. I'll put some B-roll in of what it was like before. Uh, repair this uh, bank, and then what I wanted to do was uh, bank it bank it up a lot higher, just so there's no way we can get any more water going over the top and busting the bank, which is why we left that pile of soil there. So that Sunday I had a few hours to spare, so I popped down here and I quickly uh, trimmed all this, all the weeds away, ready to do this. So what I'm going to do now is we'll get the digger down here and uh, we'll get to banking this soil up all the way along and hopefully that will prevent any uh, storm damage in the future. Okay, so that's it for today. Uh, come up to about two o'clock. Uh, those of you who follow the channel now, I do my physical work in the morning and uh, internet work for the afternoon. And tomorrow, unfortunately, I've got to go back to a uh, overseas customer's house to do a bit of building and carry on with that. They're supposedly over here in October. So I've got to go and get on with that. And uh, I'll have to bring you back in when I drop back onto this uh, later on in the week. Good morning, welcome back. Uh, we're down at the farm today, it's Saturday morning. And we're just redoing a few odd jobs. We often come down on a Saturday and Sunday, but we normally don't come uh, down and do any heavy work. The main reason we're down here today is uh, we've been promised rain for the past couple of weeks. We've hardly had any, so unfortunately we're going to have to water the top level. 
uh, if you're familiar with our channel, you, you know that the, this is a difficult one for us to water. We need to connect the pump up and the generator. Uh, I'm not going to go through all that again, uh, the sequence of doing that. If you're new to the channel, check out our previous videos and it shows you all about us watering the top level and the generator and the pump and all, everything we have to go through basically. So what we're going to do is first, because we've had a, a few problems here, we're going to clean, clean the nozzles uh, on the sprinklers. Now, it's a bit of a tedious job, but we have to do it a couple of times a year, mainly due to cal uh, lime scale. It, it, there's a lot of lime scale in the water here and it blocks up the little holes. So in a minute I'll spin you around and show you basically what we've got to do. Okay, so hopefully you can see that coming up on the camera there. That's one of the red nozzles. We've just got to screw them all off, every single tree. And what we do then is we actually soak them in an acid. Uh, I'll tell you what the acid is later. That burns out all the cal. It's also good for cleaning mortar off of patios and things like that. Burns all the cal, all the lime scale out of the nozzle. Then we rinse it off with water, make sure it's fully clean. Uh, and we put them all back on again. Uh, in a minute we'll, uh, we'll get these off, we'll get them all off. Now I'll talk to you a bit more about the different types of nozzles and why we use this nozzle. Okay, so we've got all our nozzles off, all in the pot here. We're going to take this. This is called um, Ag Agua Forte, uh, very common here in Spain. I suspect probably in the UK you won't get it because of health and safety. Early is quite strong and does burn. It's a type of acid, acid. Can't remember what type it is. I'll write it in later. But it's perfect for cleaning out all the cal in these. So I'm just going to spray that in. If you see it fizzing, you know it's got cal. And you can see that fizzing away there like you just poured coca-cola in there that's going to burn all, all of the cal all the lime scale out of the tiny little holes in all these nozzles okay so just to show you these are uh, these are the old type no nozzles we used to use uh, both types actually come apart and you can clean them but this type has a tiny little rubber diaphragm in it and what normally happens is you only screw the top it drops on the floor it gets dirty and you start back to where you started now a lot more fiddly, fiddly. Also with this, you need 25 psi for it to actually work in the diaphragm to pump, you know, and let water through. We've now ditched these completely, we don't use them at all because you can forever clean them and never pick to clean. So we've gone over to these sprinkler ones. Now these sprinkler ones come apart and there's no diaphragm. So they're really a lot easier to clean. You can quickly actually clean these whilst the system is running, which makes it a lot easier. Normally I just unscrew this, let the spray of the jet come out here, clean inside it and put it back on. Another advantage about these is you can adjust the pressure by screwing them. The tighter you screw them on, the less pressure, the more you screw it out, the more pressure. The advantage of that is, is obviously when you've got a line of trees, at the start of the line, that's where the pipe has the most pressure, and at the end of the line, that's where it has the least pressure. So what you could do is you could tighten the first tree down quite far down to lessen the pressure to that tree, and then on the last sprinkler you open it up a lot more, and that means uh, that you get an even flow basically all the way along the line. So you can set the whole system going and adjust them so they're all sprinkling evenly rather than the first tree getting the most and the last tree getting the least. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so they've stopped fizzing now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save the fluid for some more nozzles, but I'm going to try and filter them out. Get most of the acid out into that tray. And then... Straight to the bucket of water. So what we've got to do now is give these a bit of a shake. And what we do is we search for any organic material inside. That, that one's okay, but you often get a little bits of weed and things like that and organic material in there, in there that obviously the acid won't burn off. So we're going to check all them, clean them out, uh, make sure all the holes are out. And, uh, and then we'll get back to putting them back onto the, uh, onto the nozzles again. Okay, so they're all back on. Uh, we've cleaned them, we put them all back on, didn't bother filming that because it's obviously just the reverse of taking them off. And we're just walking around setting them up, that's about the uh, the right pressure we need on all of them. Okay, so that's the uh, the top trees that have had their first thousand litres of water. We've now stopped the generator and we've got to wait for uh, the thousand litre tank to refill from the big bolster at the top. So our next job is, to, is we're going to take this fence up. This was uh, around our vegetable patch last year. Uh, we did various vegetables in this area. 
But this year we're just going to do potatoes. Now, obviously potatoes are part of the nightshade, nightshade family. So they're poisonous to leaves. And uh, the rabbits here aren't young rabbits, so they're unlikely to eat them. So we're just going to pull the fence up and make uh, rotivating here a lot easier. We do know that the soil is a bit is a bit solid here, a bit, a bit dense. So what we're going to do is we're going to get some bags of uh, fertilizer, compost rather, um, mix them into the soil with a rotivator, sprinkle it on the top, mix it in with the rotivator, and then we plant the potatoes. Now potatoes really should be planted on the 20th of August, which is what I did last year. But with us having later summers, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plant them a bit later because um, last year it got warm, it's going to get up to 30 degrees again next week and it's just it's just too hot for them, the potatoes really. So I'm going to plant them a bit later being as the summers are finishing later uh, and obviously the winter's taking a longer time to come. It's quite easy that one. Yeah. A lot easier than when they're around the trees. <laughs> Good morning and welcome back to the adventures of Macadamphia. This morning we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Uh, in a minute I'll spin you around and show you. Okay, so this is what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be rotivating. Um, many people who do off-grid will relate to this. We got the rotivator out um, and found obviously the petrol was no good in it and uh, we weren't able to empty the tank. So we've had to set the fuel tank off this morning, clean all the fuel tank out, put a new fuel line to get it started before we even start work. Fairly common, I'm afraid. I mean, good advice to anybody is uh, always always empty the fuel tanks in petrol engines uh, on these small machines and then start it uh, and run the carb dry. I know it's not something you'd normally want to encourage in any other circumstances running the, the carb or the tank dry, but it does clear out all, all the old fuel. Otherwise, if you leave fuel in the tank for a couple of months, uh, since now it's no longer leaded and hasn't, obviously hasn't been for many years, uh, you get like water vapour and then the petrol goes off and it's no good then, it just bungs everything up. Another, another bit of advice, uh, if you're running several machines, I think I've run about five, five different machines, always try and get the same engine. Uh, these are all uh, either Honda engines or Honda copy engines, I think this is like a GX160, something like that. Um, China, don't be scared to buy a Chinese one if it's a decent make life on. Um, those, are, those engines, they've got technical, technological rights in China because there's a Honda factory. So it's more of a copy than a knockoff. It's only a knockoff, so much so that the parts are often interchangeable. Pistons and all sorts, you can interchange them from a Chinese copy into a Honda engine in most cases. So yeah, don't be scared to buy a Chinese copy. Like I say, I run five different engines of various different uh, machines. Plus, I've got a brand new one sat in a crate ready. Plus spare carburetors and air filters as well, just so that we don't get a break in work and have to go searching for parts because that's not easy when you live in the middle of nowhere. So in a minute, we're going to we're gonna go down and start rotivating. I'll give you a quick idea just in case you're not used to doing rotivating, that, how it works and, uh, and how to use it. Uh, you should be scared. Like it looks quite aggressive. It looks like it could do you a hell of a lot of damage if things go wrong, which it could do, but they are incredibly easy to use and if used properly, they're quite slow and you, you stay on the ball, um, they're not particularly dangerous. You know, uh, it's far more dangerous using something like a chainsaw. Okay then, so uh, I'm going to go down the bottom of the uh, rotivator and I'll bring you back in. Okay, so we're down the bottom of the rotivator, quite easy to manoeuvre the rotivator around, it does all the work. Um, we're just going to knock that little bump out there, I don't know if you can you can see it, but we're just going to quickly knock, knock that out with the uh, digger, we're just letting that warm up. Alfie is going to remove all the nozzles, just like on the top levelling, take the opportunity to clean them, and then obviously we've got to move this pipe out of the way that feeds these trees, so we can rotivate. Now most of the levels we plough, but we do like to rotivate the, uh, the fruit tree level. I know if you've seen in previous videos, it's actually plough with this when I was testing the plough, but actually it's a lot better with a rotivator. And then we do down the bottom level near the uh, false pepper and the mimosa tree as well. We normally do all that, rotivate that. And we've got to rotivate this area with the potatoes. So we'll just let this digger uh, warm up a little bit more. Um, I'll help Anthony by disconnecting this pipe so we can get this pipe out of the way because I don't want that mangled in the rotivator. And then I'll bring you back in. Coming up next in the adventures of Mac and Anthea, we rotivate the fruit trees, the ornamental garden and the potato patch. We then add compost and sand to the potato patch soil and then turn it all back in again with a rotivator. Finally, we make up our potato banks, plant our potatoes and fit the irrigation system. So all that remains is to thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please hit like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.